which is uh, before you introduce yourself let me actually first say who you are oh. and your accolades this is audrey for those of you who do not know it you will see her in your backline she's our upline coach she is the ceo of luminous nation so for those of you that have gone to the website you will see her picture there audrey has been a coach for four years now right Four years next month. Yeah. Four years next month. And she is a combined 12-star diamond, an elite two times coach. And she is in the top 10 Latina coach. So in the whole company, she's top 10. Our team is in the top 10. And she's also a success club all-star legend. So Audrey, I'm going to give it to you to take it away. Just give us a little brief you know, moment of you. So for those that we have new, could, you know, introduce yourself. Um, I'm everything that Darleni said, um, which has taken a lot of effort because I'm also a wife. I have two little boys, six and four, and I started coaching when the youngest was six months old and the oldest had just turned two. So mommies, I know what it's like to be busy. And I was breastfeeding too exclusively for a year. Um, on top of running my Beachbody business, because I've, I've been able to grow it to a six-figure income, I also still run my family business. So, you know, I, I know Darlene is the queen of time management, um, but I know that, especially for newer coaches, time and kids and all of the responsibilities that we have on our shoulders, I know that that tends to be one of the things that holds us back the most. So I just want you to know, like, I get it. But when your why is strong enough, you can push those through those things, through those barriers, and still build the business that you want to build. Um, and that being said, let me get into my presentation. Now, when Darlene and Melissa ask, can you guys see my screen? Okay. When Darlene and Melissa asked me to speak on some fall, uh, I asked Arlene, what do you want me to speak on? And she's like, building confidence. And I'm like, okay, awesome. I can definitely do that because building confidence is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, and uh, because a lot of people look at me and look at what I've been able to do. And they, one of the things that they always say to me, is, I wish I had the confidence you've had, you have. And one of the things that I love to be able to do for other people is build up their confidence. But let me tell you guys something about confidence because ooh, what happened you know a lot of times we think that there's some kind of secret we think that some people are just naturally better than others some people are more charismatic than others some people are just you know just have what it takes to build this business and some don't we, we have those misconceptions especially when things aren't going our way and especially when we're just starting and we're getting so many no's and you know, no one likes our, com our posts and no one comments on our posts. That's all normal when you start. But let me talk to you about how you actually build your confidence. Confidence is built in two ways. The first one is acquiring the necessary skills. Now, Darlene went live this weekend to talk about a, a, a labor of love from all the Star Diamonds and this team, which is our new LuminousNation.com training page in which we pretty much put our heads together, you know, the leaders of this team and said, what, would, what did, do we wish we knew when we started off as a new coach? What are the absolute skills that we need to possess in order to take off in this business, make money, help people, be successful? And we put that together in this training. So make sure you're doing that training because the beginning of confidence, the beginning of a successful business is acquiring the skill set. I did not start with the skills. Melissa didn't start with the skills. Marlene didn't start with the skills. We learned them. We applied them. We took time apart to learning, to learning the skills. And the second part of this is putting the necessary skills to work. Because a lot of people, especially those lovely members of this team who are of the Emerald Gem, you guys stay in your head a lot. A lot. And you overthink it and you overthink it and overthink it and overthink it and you feel like it needs to be perfect before you go out and do something. It doesn't. The number one thing is that you do it. You know, just do it, just do it, just do it. I don't know if any of you guys saw that speech by Art Williams. Just 
do it. So once you have the skills, just go do it. And what do you do to do it? You give it some time. We have to be persistent about it. And especially persistence that comes from the four vital behaviors. You know, it's funny because I get inboxes all the time from coaches like, how did you build a six-figure income? How did you do this? How do you have 12 diamonds? How does that happen? Guys, sometimes I, I look back at what I've done with my business, and the only thing I can tell you is that I've been consistent. And it's consistent with these four things. There really isn't anything else. Really, there isn't. I know a lot of times their coaches like to break their heads looking at other top coaches and what they do and the way they post. And then you kind of lose yourself trying to be like them. No, be the best you are at mastering the four vital behaviors. Every single day, do a little more to improve on the four vital behaviors. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Josh Coates, but Josh Coates is um, a mentor for a lot of beach body coaches and personal development. He's from the John C. Maxwell camp. And something that Josh has been telling me is that it's, it's consistency over time. You know, um, no one starts off great. Nobody does. And when he started in his business, no one ever paid attention to him. He would inbox a lot of the coaches now that are asking to be mentored by him and he wouldn't even get a message back. You know, what matters is that you start and you are really good at these four things. You know, it's the same thing. A lot of you started with your fitness journey or a lot of you are on your fitness journey right now. And I don't think any of you expects to have abs one week in. From starting a program you know that's not possible but what do you do every day you show up and you improve your form you eat a little cleaner you work a little harder you see some progress you let that motivate you to take you to the next day and the next week and all of a sudden you start seeing results and then you get like a swag about you because you, you're seeing results you know it's the same thing with this business you know there's no secret there's no there's nothing like that. It's just being really good at these four things. Invite, invite, invite. Be proof the product works. Personal development and recognition. So I want to break these down. The first one, invite, invite, invite new coaches. This is your warm market. Reach out to your family and friends. Anybody from your daily life and reach out and just say hi. You know, Something that I love that Danielle Mantoni, who's a top coach, said is that it's kind of like having a birthday party for your kids. You don't invite everyone and their mother in a spam email to your kid's birthday party. You invite the people that you're actually friends with. You invite your family. But let's say you're at supermarket shopping and you become friends with a mom in the aisle like you bond over like almond butter, I don't know, something like that. And then you request each other on Facebook and all of a sudden you start engaging with each other more and she becomes a friend. Even though you have a large war market, if you do, you have to keep expanding with at least two new contacts a day and that's the minimum. So think about all the circles in your life and how you can keep increasing your audience, keep increasing your reach so that you're exposing yourself every day to new people. And that's how your business grows. And, you know, off the bat, I wanted to tell you guys how busy I am. Because again, that's, that's an excuse that we like to hold on to because we're scared to put ourselves out there. But recognize it as an excuse and move past that and expand. I'm an introvert. I'm the person that if we're at a party, I'm in a corner by myself. And what I like to do is I like to scope out the other introverts because they're easier to talk to. So you have to be a little willing to put yourself out there. So I've made it a point to speak to new moms at my kid's school, like go out, start a conversation, say hi. Or when I take my kids to the doctor, I strike up a conversation with the secretary. There's people all around us if you pay attention. Um, and you guys have great leaders with Melissa and Darlene, absolutely incredible. And I know that in the power hours that they do with you, they really show you how to add new people every single day. 
on top of the people that you should be reconnecting with that are in your life already. And I would just want to stress that inviting is not posting a call to action, guys, and waiting for someone to inbox you. You have to be proactive about it. Who liked your post? Who engaged with your post? Go, and, go over there and inbox them and just say hi. Every day, reach out to new people. And the key to inviting is building relationships. If I could rename the first vital behavior instead of invite, 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 to me it would be build relationships, build relationships, build relationships. I never pitch somebody off the bat, ever. I go to their page, see what they're about, see what we have in common, because I ask myself first, would this person be my friend? And then I find things to connect on when I speak to them. And that's how I build a relationship. And then I ask them questions about themselves. And then when they finally ask me, like, what do you do? I see you working out. And that's when it starts to become full circle. But there's already a relationship there. And the number one thing we never want to be is salesy. So if you're just leading with the sale, leading with your challenge group, guess what? You're being salesy. So lead with the relationship. Now, I want to take you a step further. Who are you not inviting because you're judging whether or not they're interested? It's, you know, I've been a coach for four years and it's always surprised me the people that are interested. The people that reach out to me and tell me that they want to be a coach or they want a fitness program. Because I think like, really, you? Out of all people, I see you in the gym all the time. And then it turns out like that their nutrition is horrible and they lack accountability. Or it, it turns out that their finances aren't as great as I assume they are on Facebook, you know? And, and you know, who doesn't need more money? Who doesn't want to be held accountable? Who doesn't want to be in a more uplifting environment? So five people that come to mind, you know exactly who they are right now. Write down their names. Text them and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. How are you? Number two, product of the product. This is probably one of my favorite um, because it's, to me, the four vital behaviors are all interconnected. And this is a really important one for coaches because when we're doing great on our fitness program, we're everywhere, we're posting, we're happy. But when life gets in the way, like let's say you had a fight with your significant other or things aren't doing great at work, and you're emotionally overeating, you stop working out, you miss a day or two, and it's easier to miss a whole week of workouts, and you start gaining weight. What do you do? You hide. You hide. And that's the surefire way to tank your business. Because if you're hiding, you're not inviting. And the fact that you let yourself get there, that means you weren't doing personal development. And you're only thinking about yourself because you're miserable, so you're definitely not recognizing anybody else. So this product of the product is so vital. This means that you're in the trenches, guys. And it's such a hard one, especially for new coaches, because we think that it means that we have to be perfect. We don't. People with six packs are not relatable. They're just not. Because you look at them and you're like, oh, I hate them. I bet they could eat a cheeseburger and lose five pounds. You know? <laughs> we don't relate to them. But let me tell you guys something. Being in this core divorce test group comes out in November. My husband and I were chosen. I just went live about it. I posted my before and after pictures. I lost nine pounds. I'm a coach. I'm an elite coach. And I had weight to lose. But I've never missed success club in the, I don't know how many, four years. I don't know how many months. But four years I've been a coach. I've never missed success club despite having gained weight and even lost weight now in front of everyone to watch because the best coaches are those in the trenches. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, not for myself, but because I know people are watching and people need to see that I'm doing it every day. And people need to see that I'm progressing and people need to see that I'm being vulnerable when I, you know, want to overeat, when I want chocolate, when I'm not feeling good about myself, when I cried through a workout, I need to share that because that's what other people are going through. And when it comes to your challenge groups, be the first ones in your challenge group posting in the morning. You know, genuinely care about the people that are in there and be honest about your journey every step of the way. People, not, people, people are such good BS detectors. 
You guys are too. You know when people are lying. You know when people are being salesy. I'm sure you guys scroll through your news feed and you're like, yeah, right, that person works out. You know, but if you're honest, like, guys, I haven't worked out in a week. If you say something like that, like, say, you know, things are, things are tough at home. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. But I need to press play because I know how I feel when I'm done. People relate to that. They might not comment. They might not join at the moment. But one day, I promise you guys, they're going to reach out to you and they're going to say to you, when you posted that, I saw myself in you. And because of you, I started. Or I want to be able to do what you do because you've proven to me that it works and that the journey is not always going to be perfect. But because you're consistent, I want to take a chance. So this product of the product, it has to be on your A game, guys. I always think of what we do as coaches as being an offensive and defensive game. Whereas, you know, you're going out there and inviting and building relationships. That's being on the offensive in your business. But being a product of the product, it's being on the defensive. Because we all know those coaches that are coaches in name and really don't work out. We've seen those. You don't want to be that coach. And again, it's not about how much you weigh right now or where you are right now. It's about the fact that you're actually doing it. That you're getting up every day or you come home from work and you press play, you get that workout and you share your journey. People see that, you know, and make sure that you show that and you document that journey and you're real about it. That's what's going to make people connect with you. And it, it doesn't happen overnight. None of the things I'm telling you to do right now are going to make you successful this week. But if you're consistent with them, they're going to make you successful in the long term. And that's what you want. Now, let's go a step further. I want you guys to be open right now about where you are in your fitness journey. If, whether it's in your challenge group or on your public page, make a video and talk about what you're going through right now in your fitness journey. What are your insecurities about your health and fitness journey? And why are you committed? To seeing through on your goals. People want people that are relatable, that are vulnerable, because we see through that. We see through that. Personal development. Beachbody recommends 15 minutes a day, but to be honest, guys, it's not enough. Like, we've got issues. We've got issues. And in every stage of the game, we've got issues. It's funny because sometimes I think that people look at me and where I am in my business and think oh, she's good you know she doesn't need anything I do because at every level you meet different feelings that you have to bust through and I get it guys when I started as a coach personal development I did not want to do it it was for crazy people because I saw that Jim Carrey movie yes man where he goes to some kind of personal development convention and he looks crazy and I saw the movie shallow Hal with Tony Robbins and I'm like that's for crazy people I don't need that we're all crazy if you're honest with yourself we're all crazy we've all got like control issues and anxieties and all kinds of junk we could all do better at treating people better at learning to speak to people and that gets me into the thing that there's really two types of PD. There's personal development. Like, are you lacking confidence? You know, are you insecure? Do you need to learn how to forgive? Do you need to learn how to put yourself out there and, not, and get over that fear of rejection? I think for most of us, we have that to some degree. How are you working on that? Because again, no one just comes into this business as the most confident person in the world. We all struggle through that so from one degree to another so you have to make sure that you're identifying in yourself you're self-aware of what you need and you're working on it successful coaches work on their weaknesses and develop their strengths you know successful coaches don't say this is the way i am so you know i can't change that and there's business development which is you know how to do facebook ads how to do better at your marketing how to take better pictures and things like that, how to, how to write better copy for your posts. You have to be able to do both. So aim for at least an hour of personal development a day. And for a lot of us that are parents, I know that that's audio. If you're driving, if you're cleaning around the house, you know, you put on that, you put on that uh, audio 
and you clear of your mindset of everything telling you that you can't. Um, one of my favorite quotes, Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So make sure you're doing PD early in the morning so that you can accustom your mindset to doing, I can do, to say, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Day by day, I can do this. Um, that's why that's important. But I want to tell you guys something else that I've been learning now. Podcasts. Podcasts are amazing. Can't recommend them enough. School of Greatness, The Charged Life, The Team Beach Body Podcast. All of those are great. But don't be a coach that only depends on podcasts for your personal development. Because in theory, you're hearing somebody else's best practices. To me, listening to podcasts for my personal development it's more like, you know how Jim Rohn says you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with? That to me is that. So if I'm listening to like Lewis Howes in the School of Greatness, that's like me hanging out with Lewis Howes for 40 minutes and listening to what he and his guests have to say. But when you pick up a book and you spend time with it and you highlight it and you commit some of those things to memory and you work on them, that's putting yourself through college again. You know, that's a degree that you're earning for yourself. And that's how you really grow. There's really no PD that could get in the way that can, you know, um, replace sitting down and studying something. So don't rely only on podcasts. And your PD must include the national wake up call and our team calls. You know, guys, I didn't plug in when I started as a coach, because again, I'm like with all these excuses, like I got two little kids. I spent the whole day at work. Who has time for that? Especially like I hit success club. That's what I used to tell myself. I hit success club. I don't need to be on those team calls, but there's so much that you learn from one another and you have to be in the know of everything that's going on with the company and with your team, especially as you start growing a team. Let's go a step further with personal development. It has to be a part of your journey. What are you learning? What can you tell people about what you're learning? You know, sometimes we don't know what's a post. Personal development and the things that you're learning, those are great posts. Share that. You know, share how personal development has changed your life, how it's getting you to look at things differently. Be as specific as you can if you're willing to be that vulnerable. You know, people, it will resonate with people. People will learn to trust you because of that. And share it in your challenge groups because we know that this journey, especially in your fitness, it's, it's more mindset than anything else because if it was our bodies, then all of us would be fit. It's really overcoming all the BS and all the stuff that we have built up that others have instilled in us, limited beliefs and things like that. So if you share it, you, it's going to help you express yourself, understand yourself better but also make other people trust you and want to be on this journey with you. Recognition, recognition, recognition. Validate and show appreciation to everyone and anyone who is trying. Think about milestones and new scary things, like when, when people in your challenge group post their before pictures or when you see that they posted something on their public wall. You know, it takes a lot of courage. Put yourself back in those shoes. It takes a lot of courage to do those things. And something that I remember with Beachbody when I started is that they recognized me for something. And I remember thinking like, okay, wait a second. So they're paying me, but they're also recognizing me and making me feel appreciated for the work that I'm doing. That made me feel special. And that's one of the reasons that I stuck it out with this company. So never miss an opportunity to let someone know that you appreciate their efforts, that they're being watched. They'll work harder for you when they're, when they're made to feel special. Now let's take it a step further. Recognize someone on your wall today, a coach or a challenger for something great that they've done. And recognize a non-Beachbody customer for adding value to your life. Think about someone today or this week that's not associated with Beachbody, isn't in your challenge group. You're not going to pitch them or anything like that. You're just going to send them a note and say, hey, I just want you to know that I appreciate you for X, Y, and Z. Thank you. Learn to be that kind of person. 
Now, that being said, I know you guys have heard this before, control the controllable. Because growing your confidence is something that's going to take time. You know, you're developing the skill set and you're putting it into practice with the four vital behaviors. So there's so many things that are going to be out of your control. Focus on the things that are in your control. So Kim, this comes from Kim Carver, who's my mentor at Beachbody. He is like the senior director of field development or something like that. And he came up with this concept. Did you win the day? Because if you're like a type A personality, like I am, like Darlene is, and even Melissa, you know, you can drive yourself up a wall with the things that you haven't been able to cross off your list or the things that you couldn't control, like when someone opened up that enrollment email or not, you know? But there are things that you can do, such as these five. I'm not saying that these should be your five, but they should be pretty close. You know, your five invitations, five follow-ups every day checking into your fitness uh, group, checking in with your team, connecting with coaches, connecting with challengers, um, getting five new contacts to your network and your social media posts. And let's say you have a tough time right now with your own transformation, your own journey, part of winning your day, again, product of the product. For me, it's like, did I drink my Shakeology? Did I do my workout? Did I do my personal development? Did I expand my network? Did I comment back on all those people that liked or commented on my posts? All those things. So even if you're at success, even if you're at success club zero, if you can go to bed at night knowing that you did all these things, then you can sleep in peace because you're going to hit success club. Because there's no way that if you don't do these things, you're not going to hit success club. There's just no way. So then the next day, you do them again. And if you mess up, don't be hard on yourself where you start thinking this business isn't for me because that's a common mistake. It's, it's a common pitfall in this business because we all go through it. Like, you know, Darlene and Melissa, we've gone through a lot together. I know each of us has cried, but we've never given up. We've never given up because we always get back to controlling the controllable and what's in our reach to be able to do. And instead of being hard on ourselves, we think to ourselves, okay, tomorrow, how can I do better? Tomorrow, how can I be better? And as long as you have that mindset into the next day, you're going to make it, guys. You're going to make it. Remember, you're in it for the long haul, not just for this week or this month. And lastly, guys, lead yourselves. You know, your confidence doesn't depend on anything that Darlene or Melissa do for you. It's on you. It's on the habits that you set up for yourself. It's your responsibility to show up to your business. Darlene and Melissa cannot, cannot do that for you. You have all of the skills available to you that they did when they started and more, honestly, than we had when we started. You can't, rely on anybody else but yourself to get this done. If you didn't get your workout in, if you didn't do your PD, it's nobody's fault but yours. I love that quote that says like, you know, um, Beyonce has the same 24 hours that you do and look at everything that she's able to accomplish in her day. And I have the same 24 hours as Darlene, as Melissa, as all of you. It's what do you do with your time? I wake up at five o'clock in the morning to get my workout in because it's my responsibility. Nobody else's. So if you're able to lead yourself and accomplish these things and win your day, your confidence is going to increase every day. And you're going to start believing in yourself because you're going to see what's possible. Confidence is just that, just being able to see like, look what I've done. I know tomorrow I can do better. You know? So Get rid of any negativity, of anything telling you that you can't, of any, any self-judgment because those limiting, limiting beliefs are stopping you in your business or stopping you before you even get started. Don't let that happen to yourself. Other people aren't where they are just out of luck or because they're better than you. They're there just because they have a couple of rounds ahead of you. You'll get there. 
but you have to lead yourself if you want the confidence to build this business. And it's all by mastering the four vital behaviors. Do you guys have any questions? Oh my God, Audrey, that was awesome. Thank you. That was awesome. I do have a question for you. And it's mainly because, you know, based you and you touched upon it about personality types, because we have a lot of people that say I'm an introvert and I'm shy talking to people. I mean, I'm an extrovert, so I don't have that problem. Like, what's that? <laughs> I'm like, what's that? What do you mean you're afraid to talk to people? That's so easy. But um, there was a question in our um, chat saying I'm scared, you know, because I'm an introvert to um, message people. I'm such an introvert. I am such an introvert, but there's something I know about introverts, about all of you. If you're a Team Beach Body Coach, you have a why, and you love to help people, even if you're not a pearl. We all love to help people. We would all love to inspire someone. So don't hold yourself back just because you're scared of talking to people. Think of it as a gift that you're giving somebody else. Think about your why, think about your family, your kids, whatever that reason is that makes you have to be successful in this business. And think about if this opportunity wasn't presented to you, where you would be. You wanna give that to somebody else. And something about fear is that it really is just in our heads. It really is just in our heads. Don't, don't let fear hold you back because it's really hurting you. It's, it's missing you out. It's lying to you and robbing you of an opportunity to do something amazing in your life and in the lives of other people. And fear is just like confidence. Like it, it takes time to overcome. So every day that you choose to overcome being afraid, you get stronger. It's like muscles that you're developing. Every day you choose to take a step forward, you're strengthening your ability to be the kind of person that you want to be. And like I said, like introvert 101 tip is like, seek out the other introverts. If you see someone else in a corner, go strike up a conversation with them. You know that they're an introvert too. Any more questions you guys want to ask Audrey? Your fears, what are you thinking? Don't be shy, don't be shy. When it was time to interact with your cold market, um, how how did it, like how did you get through being able to communicate with people since you are introvert? I feel like I'm a combination of an introvert and an introvert. Like I feel like I'm both. I feel like I don't have a problem with talking to people, mm -hmm. but I have a problem with talking to new people. Um, I feel like sometimes. Uh, I connect with people, but I don't know how to communicate well with people, especially through the internet. Um, sometimes I call people, but then sometimes, you know, like when you're really trying to get the point through and mm -hmm. you start rambling and you feel like, oh my God, I'm about to sell them something. So <laughs> how do you feel like, how, what was your entry point into where you started feeling comfortable with your cold market? You need to change your mindset about that. You're, okay. you're thinking about it too much. That's first and foremost. But my approach is, I think of them as my best friend. And again, when I'm approaching someone cold market, I, I generally ask myself, would I be this person's friend? Because remember, you attract who you are in this business. So for me, I, I, look, for, I look for other moms of young kids, like preschool kids, because that's, that's my life experience right now. So. I already know that I have something to connect with. And I kind of, I just, I love the phrase fake it till you make it because I reach out to them and I'm like, oh my gosh, my son is going through that right now too. And I just kind of like, I always like just kind of close my eyes and go for it <laughs> and move past the fear. Okay. So that's a really good rule of thumb. Like, would you be that person's friend? Pretend they're your best friend. And especially when I first started, when because I like to move conversations to uh, the phone. So when I first started and they were interested and they'd get back to me like, yeah, I will say, Hey, so where can I reach you? They would give me their number. So this would literally be me before I'd pick up the phone. Like, 
deep breath. And then I'd smile I'm like, Hey, how are you? And for real, I would pretend they were my best friend and just have a conversation on maybe a picture that I saw they posted, or if they had just taken their kids to a park, I'd, I'd talk about that. And then I'd let them talk to me about my challenge group. Okay. And that's, what's always worked for me. Okay. We have a question that says for Facebook, do you suggest a group or the regular page? What do you mean a group or the regular page? Ronaldo, um, what do you mean by that? Hello? We could hear you. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, you know, you have the regular, hi everyone, the regular, um, your regular page, and then you also have Facebook group pages. Oh, so you're talking about building relationships on, like, let's say, a mommy group on Facebook. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm not a mommy, so I don't relate to a lot of the things you guys are saying. Well, tell me what you relate to. Tell me about yourself. Uh, well, I am an introvert. Very, <laughs> very shy. like reaching out to people especially a lot of the people i'm at well i'm not from this country i don't know a lot of people here and then it's not like i can send stuff my most of my friends are back home and it's not like i can really send stuff in a cost effective way back home so it's like and i'm an emerald too so mm -hmm. i <laughs> i kind of in my head and i'm trying to understand everything and i kind of feeling overwhelmed because i have school i'm going back i'm doing my masters i'm working full time so i kind of just feel overwhelmed but darling has been chasing me for a year and i finally took the plunge because i wanted to take that um that um commitment to myself because i've been overweight for 20 years mm -hmm. and finally i've done a lot this year in the last from last year to this year um like goal wise and i figure i really need to keep my get my health in check you know so mm -hmm. that's why i'm doing this also for the networking possibilities so like the money thing is not even it's it's, it's lower down on my totem pole so it's like uh, it sounds like you have a journey to document on your social media. Think of your Facebook page or Instagram, whatever social media you're on, as your diary. What, what did you overcome today? What recipe did you try today? What workout did you do today? How did you feel while you were doing it? What were you telling yourself while you were doing it? That's what you do okay. on your social media. And if you're part of any groups... Like, let's say you're part of a student group, the, you know, graduate program group. The people in there, I mean, think of yourself. You wouldn't want someone to friend request you just to sell you something. But you would appreciate someone that's trying to build a relationship with you. So when you guys are in those interest groups, talk to people that you actually have things in common with. Make sure that you're active in there adding value. Adding value is so important in building relationships because it makes you trustworthy. So add value in those groups, offer advice, comment, engage with other people. So then when you're ready to send them a friend request, they already know who you are. It's not some kind of like cold invitation, like who's this stranger hitting me up, you know? Okay, thanks. I'll just and let me, let me tell you something. The busiest people are the ones that get the most done. True. I'm like that. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to add this to the plate. You will. <coughs> as long as you want to do. Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. I got this. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? No? Okay. Thank you, Audrey, so, so, so much for jumping on and, you know, hosting our team call tonight. It, you gave so much value. It was amazing. Well, my pleasure. My well, pleasure. If that's it, that concludes our call, everyone. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next week. Have a fantastic week. I sound oh, like yeah. the national wake-up call. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye.